So what is a runaway star exactly and how did I capture it with my backyard telescope? In order to explain all that I have to get back to the beginning of this year when I captured the core of the Orion Nebula with my Edge HD telescope from my backyard. So let me show you that picture. Alright, so how do the trapezium stars at the core of Orion relate to what you're talking about today? Those are the most massive stars in Orion and those are part of what makes it such an interesting star forming region. That's the closest star forming region where you have stars that massive. And the winds, the outflows, energetic outflows from these stars tend to shape the entire dynamics and evolution of the immediate Orion Nebula region. So after capturing the core of the Orion Nebula, I wondered, where do all the stars that are born in the Orion Nebula go? It looks like those stars are just fixed in one position, peacefully coexisting and evolving together, and you often get videos with some classical music playing in the background. Something like this. But the reality is that the Orion Nebula is more like a pinball machine or a game of pool. There are massive stars who are dancing around and colliding with one another. About 2 million years ago, just after the birth of the Orion Nebula, something like that happened with three stars. Two massive stars lived peacefully together in the trapezium cluster of the Orion Nebula. However, they collided or strayed too close to another pair of stars. Complicated gravitational interactions ensued, which flinched the stars into space as runaway stars, while leaving the other pair of stars intact. So this third pair of stars is still lurking near the scene of the crime. It's Iota Orionis, a beautiful third magnitude triple star. You can clearly catch it just south of the Orion Nebula. The location and the path traveled of Iota Orionis are important clues that tie this star to its two distant cousins that ran away. Yeah, for tonight I want to use my Celestron Edge HD 8-inch telescope with the 0.7 reducer uh, for my first dedicated narrowband deep sky uh, project. And I was thinking about uh, capturing the flaming star nebula. So A.E. Auriga is the name of one of the two stars that were thrown out of the Orion Nebula by Iota Orionis at super high speeds. It traveled to the north and ended up in, you guessed it, in the constellation Auriga, 1300 light years from Earth, where it only recently entered the so-called Flaming Star Nebula, which it is illuminating. So this is my narrowband picture of the Flaming Star Nebula taken through my Edge HD telescope, which also includes the runaway star AE Origa. AE's temperature is measured to be about 36,500 Kelvin and it's very luminous, about 30,000 times the luminosity of the sun. It is currently traveling at 90 kilometers per second or 56 miles per second relative to the sun. Astronomers have discovered both shocks in both infrared and X-ray light as the star plows through the gases and dust at three times the speed of the nebula itself. Eventually it will depart this nebula and the flaming star nebula will flame no more. AE's fate is to explode as well, but as a single star, which will someday be no more but for a lonely neutron star left behind. <laughs>